This video is part of a series of videos on force and motion. This is from the IGCC syllabus. Please remember to subscribe to the Physics Tips for Cambridge Students YouTube channel and hit the bell notification so that you get alerted of my future videos. Without much further ado, let's get started. Right, forces and motion. We're going to look at friction in this video as well as balanced and unbalanced forces. Now, friction is the force that opposes motion between two surfaces and it always acts in the opposite direction of motion. Now, if you look at this block, you find that frictional force is opposing the applied force which is going to the right, which is P. Now, I'm using the spring balance there to measure the amount of friction. That type of friction is called static friction. So the applied force P from the hand pushes or results in a reading on the spring balance. And just when this starts to move, the block starts to move, then we record the maximum value, which would be our static friction. So the maximum friction of force when the block just begins to move is called the starting or static friction of force. When the block starts moving at a steady speed, remember steady speed is constant speed, the balance reading is now less than the static friction and this will be called sliding friction. So sliding friction is less than a static friction. Now let's look at uses of friction. Number one is... Uh, Friction can be a help or a hindrance. Walking would be n not possible if there was no friction. That is between our shoes and the ground. Now, friction between the wheel drums of brake pads slow down a moving car. In machines, some of the energy supplied is used to overcome friction between the moving parts. And the work that is done against friction is changed into heat energy. The efficiency is therefore less than 100%. Friction is reduced by lubrication and the use of ball bearings because the surfaces are more separated. Now let's look at fluid friction. Fluid friction exists between objects and a fluid, e.g. air or a liquid. Remember, a fluid can be a gas or a liquid. Air resistance or drag force is also an example of fluid friction. Uh, is an example of fluid friction, yes. And fluid friction is greater if we are talking of an object with large surface area. So the larger the surface area, the larger the air resistance or the larger the fluid resistance. Also, if the object is moving with high speed, so we are saying that area, speed, and also the weight or mass also affect uh, the value of the fluid friction. Now, balanced forces. With balanced forces, we have a body that is either stationary or that is moving at constant velocity. So just remember that when something is moving at constant velocity, the forces would be balanced. So there's no resultant force. In other words, uh, the acceleration will be zero. Now the forces acting on the plane here are the lift, the weight, so the lift and the weight balance so that this uh, plane does not move either up or down. And then also the thrust from the engine and air friction tend to move in opposite directions, so which means the uh, plane will be moving with a constant velocity. Then Newton's first law of motion summarizes this. If a body stays at rest, or if it is moving, it continues to move in a straight line with constant velocity unless a resultant force or an unbalanced force acts on the body. So what does it mean? If you have an object that is at rest, an object that is, you leave a book on the table, you can come back after so many years, you still find the book on the table, unless if there's a force that lifts the book from the table. Or if you have something that was already in motion with a constant speed, 
that object will never break or never slow down or will never accelerate as long as no, there's no force that is acting on it. Now, unbalanced forces. Unbalanced forces now result in a resultant. So, an, a resultant or an unbalanced force acting on a stationary object will cause it to start moving. A resultant force acting on a moving object will cause it to either slow down or to speed up or to change the direction of motion. So this is illustrated with these forces. You see that the upward and the downward force are balanced, but then uh, the force to the right is less than the force to the left, so which means it accelerates in the direction of the larger force to the left. Now, when you have all the arrows of being of the same length, that is up, down, and then sideways, then the object continues to move with a constant speed. When the force to the right is greater than the traction force that is coming from the engine, then you have a deceleration or carrying. In other words, the car will slow down. Now, it can be shown that if the resultant force on an object is doubled, the acceleration also doubles if the same mass is used. That is, resultant force is proportional to the acceleration. Also, if the mass of the object is doubled, the acceleration would be halved if the same resultant force is used. So acceleration is inversely proportional to the mass. Now combining the two, that's the first one and the second one, you end up with acceleration is proportional to resultant force over mass. And the constant of proportionality was found to be 1. So which means resultant force to be equal to mass times acceleration. So this is called Newton's second law of motion. And according to Newton's second law of motion, one Newton is defined as the force which gives a mass of 1 kg an acceleration of 1 meter per second squared, i.e. 1 Newton equals 1 kg meter per second squared. Now I'll conclude this video by looking at an example. Now we have a car of mass 1000 kg which is accelerating to the left. The force from the engine is 1600, so we're talking of this force to the left is 1600, and the total frictional force is 400 newtons. Then it says, find the total resultant force on the car. So a free body diagram, you just draw a dot, the dot is enough. So you have a force going to the left of 1,600 newtons. And then we have frictional force, which is 400 newtons. So the resultant force in this case would be 1,600 newtons minus 400. So which is going to give you uh, 1,200 newtons. And then the asking for the acceleration of the car. Now, from our formula, F is equal to MA, that is the resultant force is the one that's equal to MA. We are going to say the mass, which is 1000 kg given there, times the, uh, sorry, we want to find the acceleration, so times A is equal to the resultant force which you found earlier, 1200. So, which means A will be equal to 1200 over 1000 which is 1.2 meters per second squared. So that's the acceleration. Then it says, if the total frictional force becomes 1,600 newtons, what happens to the car? Now, we've already said that the force from the engine is 1,600 newtons. And now, if the frictional force builds up to be 1,600 newtons, then there won't be any resultant force. In other words, the acceleration will be zero. So the car would continue moving with a constant speed or at a constant speed. I hope you have understood. Please let me know in the comment section and remember to like and share this video. Signing out.